Hey, it's Dr. Infinity. Welcome to White Pill Media. And this is a pseudo recommendation. Anyway, I just want to say welcome to the channel. <laughs> So a while ago, I checked out Sharp and I put a review on my channel. I was a pretty big fan of the series. Uh, I did feel like there were some weaker episodes here and there, but overall, like I think Sharp is like fantastic. Like it's really, really good. And I had heard that Horatio Hornblower was similar to Sharp in that there was a guy that joined the British Navy during the Napoleonic Wars. And he was trying to rise through the ranks like Sharp was trying to rise through the army. So I really wanted to give the show a shot, and I finally did. However, one, I'm going to say overall, full spoilers for the show and everything. I did not care for the show in the same way as Sharp. And I'm going to get into that a little bit and talk about where I felt like uh, the show... Yeah, just didn't live up to where it could have reached, I guess that's how I would call it. Uh, so I'm just going to go right in, just probably episode by episode, because there's only like eight episodes, you know, and yeah, I'll be discussing what I like and dislike and such. So first off, the episode, uh, so first off, the show starts with Sharp getting on board this ship, and he has this captain called Captain Keen. I'm like almost fucking positive that this Captain Keen was a character in Sharp, and I'm I'm pretty sure he replaced like... Brian Cox, you know, as a uh, like Wellington's kind of spy master. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm almost positive that's him. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably have a picture to post from. Anyway, I really feel like this show is just super fast compared to Sharp. And Sharp had 14 episodes for the original stuff in comparison to Horatio having just these eight, but. The pacing feels like way too damn fast in this episode. We have Horatio who he mentions his father being a doctor and that uh, he like owes his dad some money. I don't know why this detail, maybe it plays more of a part in the books, but we never see Horatio meet his dad and we never have any kind of uh, follow up to like maybe there's some money trouble in the family. Nothing comes of that, so... I thought that was kind of strange. Horatio's kind of crew of friends, you know, his kind of officer friends, and then his kind of uh, lower crewmates that are kind of his people. There's just a lot of characters introduced really fast for Horatio, and we have our antagonist named Simpson, and, you know, he and Simpson kind of go at it for a while, and they have this duel, and his friend Clayton fights it for him, and Clayton gets killed, you know, and this is all, like, Pretty quick shit. So there's not as much of a emotional impact for like a character called uh, for Clayton dying because this is just the first fucking episode. You know, we only met him a few minutes ago, so he doesn't have as much impact for us. You know what I mean? Where like the deaths in Sharp, where it's like Teresa or it's Perkins, their deaths are have definitely more of an impact because you know we, we see them for a while uh we have a few episodes to get to know them and kind of their relationship with our main character and yeah so that that was something as well where it doesn't build up characters enough for their deaths to have as much meaning and overall a problem i had with horatio is the lack of like really compelling villains like uh you had a few recurring ones in Sharp, you know, but Obadiah, Obadiah is like a god tier villain. He is so fucking good. He reminds me somewhat of Blue Duck in Lonesome Dove, the book. That's a fantastic book. Anyway, but uh, like that, there's like Major Duco and then some of the British guys, and they all like have their part. And there are some like just one episode off villains, and they're not as impactful. Horatio lacks these kind of more powerful villains. Anyway, uh, I did like the rat fight thing <laughs> with guys just uh, biting rats to death under uh, in the ship. That's really interesting, kind of cool. Uh, that was neat. Yes! I got it. 
I like Horatio uh, being a little underexperienced, like bringing that friendship. And I did think that was nice where Sharp starts off as like this really confident, uh, experienced soldier. But Horatio, he has a lot to learn and to grow. And there's uh, room for him to grow with like the ship sinking. He doesn't really know what to do. And, you know, he's also afraid of heights. And that's another thing he has to overcome while they're attacking the Papillon with these small boats. You know, he has his friend Archie kind of have a attack, which I guess that might be like shell shock or like PTSD or something. It's some kind of like fit that Archie has that almost gets them taken away. But Simpson, uh, for a bad guy, he shoots Horatio off. And then he cuts away Archie's boat. And as far as Horatio believes, he fully believes that Archie is now dead. Archie has been uh, killed because he's just drifting and he's just going to, like, die of dehydration. Or, yeah, he would die of dehydration before starving. But he fully believes that Horatio, or sorry, that Archie is dead now, right? He fully believes that he's dead. And we have another duel between the two of them and... Simpson even shoots him early, doesn't kill Horatio, and then he begs Horatio to spare him. And I really hate that Horatio does. He He's willing to spare him because Simpson has killed Clayton. Simpson tried to kill uh, Horatio early in the duel. And as far as Horatio knows, he 100% killed Archie because Archie's just drifting and will die. And... It feels like such bullshit. I'd say like undo like British honor and nobility and being a gentleman. It's like, put this fucking guy down. He is 100% going to kill some innocent person sometime later unless you kill him here and now. So it feels extremely contrived and just too easy for Simpson to rush Horatio and then get shot down like a dog. And it wraps it up, but it wraps it up too nicely. I would have really liked Horatio just to kill him there and then. Anyway, because it doesn't feel like uh, reasonable. It doesn't feel earned for what we see of like maybe he and Simpson just went at it, but Simpson is like an okay guy. He's not. He's he's pure villainy, and you believe that this guy has now killed two of your friends and tried to kill you. So it doesn't make sense that he's still willing to be a gentleman or a nicer like British guy. You know what I mean? Uh, so in the second episode, uh, I like Captain Foster. I, I think he was good. I was kind of worried he would be like a more, because uh, he's more like rash and stuff compared to the other officers. I think the second episode was among the better ones. You know, our, our first view of Foster is that he's willing to sacrifice men for his honor. And also in the episode with the Spanish attacking them, they're dealing with uh, half rations and men, you know, suffering from sickness and such. We have Finch, who is a part of, like, the crew, which is, like, Styles and Matthews and, like, uh, the other kind of lower crewmen that are kind of Horatio's guys. And Finch ends up dying from, I guess, just some kind of sickness and complications from not having enough to eat and not getting the right nutrients. But, again, it's sort of another thing where... We don't really know Finch. So his death isn't as impactful as it could have been if Finch dies in like two or three episodes after we get to know him. Does that make sense? You know, so it's a lot of that where it's just like you're very constrained for time. So you're trying to hit like emotional reactions and emotional peaks that you don't have. I hope that makes sense. I do like that they're going to like Iran, you know, and it's like, yeah, I was like pretty excited for them like, hitting more exotic places than Sharp because uh, I read this Napoleon book and it was really sweet and everything, but there's like this battle where like Napoleon was going to Egypt, right? And like his Navy gets like annihilated as they just like land in Egypt. So he and his men are like trapped in Egypt for like a fucking year or so, right? And I'm like, that's epic. I really thought we were going to get that episode we never got that episode, so I was kind of disappointed with that because that sounds great, and it feels like I don't know a ton about like the big naval battles for this period or anything, but 
I, I feel like uh, Horatio was always kind of kept out of the way of that stuff, if that makes sense. Like, uh, it feels like we're dealing with like really small engagements and not the most interesting stuff. But I thought Iran was good. We got to see the that fat guy from Rome. He's the newsreader from HBO's Rome, which is not a series I liked. You can check out a review I have on my channel. Didn't like the series, but I love the newsreader. He's a great guy. He's been in a few things as well. Sharp. He's in Sharp for one episode with, like, the Irish-Spanish Brigade. He's a cool dude. For God's sake, man, keep it steady! Swing him in. He has a few good moments. I like Bunting in this episode. He's a guy that just... Steals food, you know, because he's hungry. The gauntlet, uh, yeah, that's that's some brutal shit, man. That is some good fucking punishment. Uh, I really like that. Uh, Styles says "I, I, Captain" to Horatio, which makes Horatio smile. That was a that was a nice bit. Hell, we'll never be able to get them on board before nightfall. Very well, Styles. Take some men from the loading and get the water set up. Ah, uh, come. <clears throat> And Horatio, like, has to kill someone that he doesn't want to for the first time when Bunting makes another break for it. Uh, we have Foster breaking their quarantine and taking the risk. Yeah, you know, Horatio's kind of early view of Bunting has dropped, which is nice. You know, kind of his hero worship has been tempered by actually seeing this guy in the field and, like, uh, how he's willing to put people at risk for kind of his more bold or unnecessary risks. But we have this fire ship thing. And uh, which happens and we get to see Foster as like a more dimensional character where, yes, he is kind of reckless and he is willing to put himself and others in danger. But he's also with Horatio steering this fire ship away and willing to die to save other ships and a lot of other men. So it was a good balance. I, I really did enjoy that with Horatio and him. OK, so the third episode uh, one. Kennedy is alive. I, I think it's Archie Kennedy, who's also in Battlestar Galactica, which is a show that starts good, becomes not great as it goes on, and I would say pretty bad by the end. But that was interesting. He's Leah Dama? Yeah, yeah, he's Leah Dama. Uh, but they're, he's alive. He's in this prison, and we have uh, this woman that they've also brought with them as well. This countess is actually a uh actress and i will say that they were like maybe hinting at like some kind of romance between her and horatio i will say i did look up she's not an ugly woman she's mature but she's beautiful right she is she is but at the time that this episode came out she's 47 and he's 26 so she's like old enough to be his mom so it, it's a little strange uh I, I think it's like fine she's not like ugly or anything but it was interesting well, grace is too kind oh still it's the least i can do well come on men three cheers for her grace hip hip hooray, hooray. hip hip hooray hip hip hooray you know i thought the like failed prison escape and like this episode was also like pretty decent uh, but while there are like some decent episodes here, I didn't like completely hate the show, but these decent episodes never hit like the peaks of sharp. If that makes sense to you. Yeah. Yeah. Horatio has been made a Lieutenant and I don't like that. They willingly return themselves to jail. Again, it just feels a bit too much like a British honor or nobility where it's just like, Look, your guys could fucking die in jail. Like, they put Archie in an inhumane hole where he was on the brink of insanity, and you yourself were on the brink of insanity. Get your fucking men out of there. Like, get them out right now. So that felt like a bit too much for that, where it's just like, similar to the duel, where it's just like, okay, the reality of the situation is some of your men might die in this place. Get them out, save them, save them, save them. Anyway, uh, Captain Pelu, Captain Pelu is a solid guy. You know, he's kind of, uh, he looks out for Horatio. I don't know if they were like hinting that maybe he was Horatio's dad. I got like weird vibes from that, but I wasn't sure if that was true. But these French loyalists are planning on invading France, you know, and it's a decent episode. Uh, I, I kind of side 
with the French loyalists who are like pretty brutal, but like the revolutionary people were pretty fucking brutal as well. So it's, it's great for them to like be the victim and pretend to be the victim when probably months ago they were just executing completely innocent people as well. It's sort of like, where does the revenge stop? And it's like, I don't know, but they're, they're definitely not innocent. These, these peasants aren't innocent people. Not really. I do like uh, how he's killed where he's face up to watch the guillotine fall. That is fucked, dude. That is some metal shit, bro. But the French girl that Horatio is interested in and takes her with him, she's really cute. Uh, but she's no Teresa, right? Because she's introduced in this episode and then she's killed in this episode. So she's not super impactful. Not super impactful, which is, it is what it is, right? The fifth episode and like the sixth episode kind of cover the mutiny. And I, I think this is probably the strongest like episode pair in the series. Uh, we have the captain on the ship that they're plotting the mutiny against. He's from this really great Star Trek The Next Generation pair of episodes called The Chain of Command. He's excellent. I'm going to play a little bit of that. Uh, but even if you're not like a big Trek fan, th that's still like a great two-parter to check out, you know, really good. But yeah, he's just paranoid and he's, he's great. Yeah. I, I like kind of just the build up with the men being pushed further and further and further and Willard, uh, where it's just like, you know, we're building up to this kind of breaking point, this kind of mutiny. In that cup, Mr. Hornblower, you plotted and planned so that my lawful authority should be set at naught. <laughs> No, not at all, sir. Why attempt to deny it? You think to deceive me? I'll have it out of you, by God. Quartermaster, run forward and get Mr. Matthews to lay aft here and his mates. Aye, sir. Another dozen, and you'll coo like a duck. You do, however, have a choice. You can live out your life in misery, held here, subject to my whims. Or you can live in comfort with good food and warm clothing, women as you desire them, allow to pursue your studies of philosophy and history. I would enjoy debating with you. You have a keen mind. It's up to you. A life of ease, of reflection and intellectual challenge. Or this. What must I do? Nothing, really. Tell me how many lights you see. How many? How many lights? Sixth episode, you know, we just have more of the stuff going on. Uh, Santo Domingo, I, I think that's the Dominican Republic, which is right next to Haiti. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Santo Domingo is the Dominican Republic. Anyway, so the trial's going on and such. And to save Horatio's life because that one guy is just being a scumbag and he's placing the blame on Horatio. We have Archie coming forward uh, who's dying of his wounds and he probably will die. And he's saying that he pushed the captain and Archie ends up dying in his bed so that Horatio can be saved. So he's a solid guy. I, I will say he's not really a harper. He's not a harper to a sharp, but he's still a good friend. You know, he's still a good friend. And Horatio makes captain by the end of the episode. Seventh episode, we got Maria, who, is, who likes sharp, or sorry, who likes Horatio and Horatio's now been made captain of the Hotspur. Bush is back from the mutiny stuff. And he's a nice kind of counter to Horatio where he's like more harsh with the men, especially of Styles. But it's cute. Maria knits him some mittens, which is nice. And we have some reveals that uh, Wolf, who's this Irish guy on the ship, is a traitor. And so is this Captain Hammond, who uh, his nephew is kind of a coward and a fuck up, but... He didn't deserve to die like that on the beach. 
Uh, Hammond ends up taking his own life, and Wolf manages to slink away, but yeah, it's just the villains are okay, but they're never, like, as, like nothing is going to, like, or, well, nothing was really going to, like, top Obadiah. Obadiah is just so fucking good. He's so fucking creepy, and he's just powerful. Whenever Obadiah is on screen, like, he's fantastic. I'll probably play uh, his little death sequence where Sharp is legitimately afraid when Obadiah starts speaking again, you know? Because he might still, that fucker might still be alive, you know? that That's kind of the impact he has where Wolf doesn't carry that weight. end of the episode Horatio's asked Maria to marry him but he doesn't seem like super enthusiastic about it maybe it's just because he kind of struggles to express emotion and such and it's just kind of like out of left field for him I don't know uh but it's, she's no Teresa I'll say that she's no Teresa sharp overall Nice women. Nice women. You know, a lot of good women there. So in the final episode, Horatio is getting married. And, oh, we get Brace uh, Brace Girdle back, who is the nice guy from the indie ship. Uh, I really liked him. I thought he was a solid guy. I wish he had had more time in the series because he felt like a really good mentor to him, to Horatio. But it's after the examination that the real test begins. Sir? Well, the book can teach you how to steer a ship. But it can never show you how to manage a starving crew. The men are afraid, Horatio. Many have seen before the effects of prolonged rationing. They fear a future of disease and death. But why are they singing? I'll give them the choice between singing and weeping. Which would you fancy? A good lieutenant gets to know the ways of his men. If you wish to test your readiness, begin there. Uh, and then we have this small raft where there's this American woman and this obviously French guy. And from this Napoleon book I read, I was like, could it be like who I think it is, you know? Uh, and then it was, you know, because it's Bonaparte's brother that ended up going to America. And he married this French woman and then he had to leave her because Napoleon demanded it and he didn't really fight for her. And that was great. That was like... Good history, and I, I wish there was more stuff like that in the series, because that was cool. Uh, that was a nice reveal. Carson Carson from Down Abbey, he makes a brief appearance as part of, like, the Diplomatic Corps. That was cool. And, you know, we have Wolf back, but, yeah, it's just like, eh, eh. Like, when he finally dies, it's just like, eh, you know, uh... And then, you know, that's just kind of the series where Horatio's getting another promotion. He's getting a better ship. His wife's pregnant, so his family's starting. And that's just kind of it, you know. I will say, like, the ships and, like, the setting and the costumes, those were all great. There were some stronger episodes. But I, I think just because I have recently watched Sharp, in I, Claudius, especially I, Claudius, which is probably the best TV series I've ever seen. Uh, but those set like an extremely high bar. And Horatio does a pretty decent job, but it doesn't like get close to those two. So I think that's probably why I'm uh, rating Horatio a bit lower than those two because I just saw them. You know, it, it's still a decent show. If you're looking for, like, more, like, decent stuff about, like, uh, yeah, a decent British show about the Napoleonic era, you know, if you want some Navy stuff, maybe Master and Commander would be better than Horatio overall to watch, you know? I don't know. I mean, that's debatable. But it wasn't terrible, but it didn't live up to the pretty high expectations I had set for it. And, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, I set up an Odyssey channel where I have some content that 
probably wouldn't do so well on YouTube or content that gets like flagged for copyright, which I kind of view is somewhat bullshit. But there's an iClaudius review on there, which has more clips that I was forced to take out of my YouTube upload. And we have such classics as Minecraft, but we don't solicit nudes from our underage fans. And me and the boys forced to attend Drag Queen Storytime Hour under penalty of death. Both classics. Both classics. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to be reviewing next. It might be another TV show. It might be some movies just to kind of give me a bit of a break because it's kind of a lot for me to, you know, watch an entire show during a week, come up with a review and everything, and just do that week after week after week. So it might be like a movie here and a movie there to kind of break up the pace a bit. We'll see. But uh, I definitely want to check out like Fall of the Eagles. Yeah, there's going to be some other stuff. Uh, Got other reviews and shit on my channel. Anyway, Dr. Infinity out.